Hello guys, and welcome to my review of uh, Space Marine 2, the, the campaign. I uh, decided to split into three, uh, simply because uh, they are quite different. I mean, I'll give an overall review at the end of each one as well, uh, for the whole game. Uh, just in case you only watch one of these. Uh, this is going to be very spoiler heavy. Uh, so if you haven't played the game to completion probably best not to watch this as i'll be doing some spoilers um it's nothing too spoilerific uh to be fair um but obviously just yeah try to avoid it if you haven't already completed the game um and let's get down to it the graphic graphics pretty damn good in some scenes like this one it's really nice uh especially obviously uh which has been drawn attention to is the um the swarms of enemies how many enemies can be on the screen at the same time which is pretty pretty amazing um and yeah i mean it's a couple of scenes i think the small sh shortcut scenes um look a little bit dated i think uh but for, in general it does look pretty damn good um now obviously yeah going to be playing titus who was in the first game unfortunately the the, uh, the time difference between the first one and the second one i have did forget a lot of the st story from the first one um but i obviously generally knew what happened happens in that one uh in all honesty i think this is a quite a big improvement over the first one uh story wise and combat wise uh they haven't changed too much when it comes to the combat uh apart from the online uh version of it uh you know pvp and the pve um <clears throat> you're basically just a big old badass character who goes around king kicking a lot of butt but and i think that's the main draw of the game is uh people describing it as a very old school uh game experience and that's kind of true the story is quite uh quite good i wouldn't say it was anything to write home about uh i wouldn't be like oh this has got one of the best stories uh of the year or anything like that but uh, it does the job and we have good side characters the two characters you kind of play alongside like the first one you had two other characters that you played alongside this time you can actually um have friends play those characters but uh obviously i played it uh with the ai and the characters are are quite interesting i actually kind of think they're a bit more interesting uh, um than the main character the main character he is a bit at least when you when you look at him he's a very old school he's uh square jawed short hair uh guy and it's it's he's a bit um you know a bit generic uh if you pl you know watch action films from the 90s and 80s <laughs> he's basically any main character from any of those films uh or the early 2000s late 1990s uh computer game characters um so you know uh nothing to write how at home about um i mean you get a, you also get a good variety of weapons in this game uh, and that's also something I wanted to really talk about is uh, every kind of weapon in the game feels quite punchy. Majority of them feels useful. So, you know, if you want a shotgunny type weapon, there's the multi melter. If you've got the long range generic assault rifle, you've got the bolter, you've got a long range sniper rifle, which I honestly think is uh, quite lack lackluster. The long range kind of sniper rifle, uh, mainly because the hordes and enemies will be just rushing towards you at all times so um long range weapons aren't really all that useful um uh if you want long range uh i'll probably go for the bolter because you can go a bit long more long range um um and close range at the same time so uh, i wouldn't go for the sniper uh and that kind of goes on carries on to the other modes as well to be honest um and yeah i mean another thing that kind of it modern gaming does is drip feed you rewards 
this doesn't actually do that uh, you can pretty much unlock the majority of weapons in the first two hours and it's up to you how you play the rest of the game with those weapons you don't get like a leveling up system uh, nothing like that you know no like uh, skills or anything like that and I don't think it loses anything for that you know a good portion of games modern games uh, you know you're expecting the next skill you're expecting the next next gun upgrade um, as like a reward this is what pushing you forward but this doesn't need it it you know the action and the graphics and the story is enough to keep you going uh, the campaign is about eight hours long um, it's nothing uh, you know doesn't outstay as welcome and but i can understand why people say it's not long enough for the price tag um and that does come into play um and all honestly i think the, the beginning and the middle of the game are the best bit parts of the game i think the ending is a little bit uh lackluster uh it changes from fighting tyrannies to chaos um which is kind of how the first game played out uh and i think um you know the the height of the game is fighting the tyranids in the high city it looks amazing visually uh great uh designs obviously f from games workshop most of the, most of these designs and stuff but it just you know it just looks like a very unique kind of world uh and virtually stunning um and I think the last quarter of the game is a bit lackluster. You get go to like a uh, broken up uh, cemetery type world, uh, all kind of very samey, not very visually stunning. Um, you do have a couple of great scenes near the end. Uh, the, the Last Stand, which is very reminiscent of a famous piece of artwork, which is uh, the Crimson Fists against the Tyranids. Um, and now obviously you're facing uh, chaos instead but um obviously they could have uh recreated it completely because you did actually face tier uh but nevertheless um it's quite it's quite epic and obviously you do get a um you do get a um little cameo from kalgar the uh chapter leader of the um ultramarines um now like this was pretty epic but um, all honesty, I was just hoping for a bit of Gilliman, the Primarch, or maybe even seeing some Custodes or something like that. Uh, but still, pretty, pretty exciting. But like I said, the, it was visually just a, such a damper compared to the rest of the game. Um, the literal last, like, few minutes of the game before the, you know, epilogue, you, you have this fight where it's in, like, just like a alternative kind of uh mindset you know like black with uh some enemies whispery kind of ghost ethereal kind of enemies and stuff it was kind of like uh, really compared to the rest of the game um this is what we get for the ending it's a bit disappointing um but uh yeah uh the majority of the game was excellent like you see the and just the executions and the combat was excellent um and works really well as a single player game um and obviously there's a lot more to this game outside the main story you got uh pve and you've got the pv pvp like i said i'm going to be doing reviews of those um and I do think this has re replay value uh, just because the combat's just so much fun. Um, and some of this, like I said, some of the mid scenes and early scenes are quite stunning. Uh, quite easy to uh, just want to replay. Um, and yeah, so like I said, um, there were a couple of scenes that I was a bit like, eh, but that's kind of a bit more um, law based type problems. There was a scene where. We come across enemies. Uh, this is, uh, as you see now, is the later stages against chaos. Um, but there was um, scenes where uh, enemy Imperial Guard have turned traitor, uh, and that's pretty epic. Apart from uh, one of your allies, a Primark, uh, not Primark, uh, a Space Marine gets killed, uh, but he doesn't seem to actually take much damage whatsoever. And there's a couple of scenes where some. Uh, 
ultramarines uh, die, but they don't seem to take all that much damage and die quite easily. Um, but then that you know that comes parcel and parcel when it comes to making computer games and stuff like that. Really, you've got to make make it work, uh, even if it's a, a bit detrimental to the the lore of the original, that kind of thing. Um, but apart, like I said, that is literally some of the only faults I can really describe about this game. Um, yeah, it's very old school, um, but I think in some respects that's a bit detrimental. There are a few things that are just going, well, they could have, you know, updated the clunkiness of the combat a little bit. You know, yeah, okay, you're supposed to be these massive space marines in space marine armor uh, and stuff like that. But, you know, in the lore, they're described as being super fast and just like a blur to the uh, normal human's eyes and things like that. So I think yeah, maybe it could be a little bit, uh, could do with a bit of an update. Anyway, like I said, give it, I rec give it an eight and a half out of ten. Uh, and I think that's a very good score. Uh, I can understand why people would love Warhammer 40,000 would and or 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 both old school kind of games uh action games i uh i could understand why they would give this uh this uh game a higher score um but i can also see why people who are not into one or forty thousand and you know uh not really uh craving old school kind of games uh would give this a lower score uh especially overall because uh you know pve uh, yeah, PvP could lower or higher the score depending on how you feel those um, modes work. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. I hope you um, come back to watch the other two reviews. Uh, I said like campaign has got an eight, hour, eight hour and a half out of ten. Uh, overall, I think the other versions kind of maybe lower it a bit, and I'll give it an eight overall. But the campaign is really solid a really solid uh, action game anyway if you did like the video give it a like and subscribe because i'll be bringing you more reviews in the future bye bye